In this video, I'll show you how to paint the man who kicked off like it was the 31st millennium. It's time to learn how to paint Horus Lupercal. So let's have a look at the sub-assemblies. Everything is primed with Chaos Black. So we've got the display base on its own. We've got Horus's head separate, uh, and we've got all of Horus's body all built, ready to go as well. So that's how we're going to start. We're going to paint Horus's body first, then we'll do the base. The first element I'm going to paint is the wolf pelt, and the reason I'm doing this first is because I'm going to dry brush it. There's lots of nice texture there. So the first colour I'm going to use is Corvus Black, which is a really, really, really dark grey, and it'll give some subtlety. And I'm going to paint this all over the wolf fur. Next up, I'm going to go to a lighter colour, which is Mechanica Standard Grey, and I'm going to use this just towards the edges, feathering out, and leaving that Corvus Black in the middle. The next layer I'm going to do is going to be with Administratum Grey, which is a much brighter grey, so use this sparingly, again, focusing towards the end of the wolf pelt. And lastly, I'm just going to take some Ulthuan Grey for those really extreme edges, as well as along the snout of the wolf, and that'll give me a really nice effect on the pelt early doors. Before we get into painting all of the metal trim, we need to base this one shoulder pad in the green colour of the Sons of Horus, and we're going to use Horus's namesake, Lupercal Green, for that. Make sure that it's not too thick and you don't obscure too much detail, but make sure it's a nice even coat that we get down. With that pad done, we'll now move on to all of the trim. So Horus has got a nice dark gold trim across all of his armour, so the colour we're going to base it with is Balthazar Gold. We're going to do all the metallics all at once, so we'll do the gold and then we'll do the silver. Take this Balthazar gold and paint it all over the trim. There's going to be some areas where you can get a good brush tip into and some where you're going to need to use the side of the brush along sharp edges. Be as tidy as you can but it's okay if you do make some mistakes because we can always paint over it. Obviously the less mistakes we make now the more time we save later. And in the same vein, we'll then use Lead Belcher to base coat all of the silver areas. Now, there are quite a few silver parts as well. So we've got lots of cabling. We've got the talons on the Talon of Horus. We've got the bolter. We've got the ammo feed. We've got parts of that maul as well. So there's lots of different bits. If you're not entirely sure, check the box art. And there are some little panels on the armour to paint silver as well. Once you've got that done, it's a nice easy step. We're going to take some null oil and we're going to wash all of the armour panels. Now... Try and keep this along the trim and those relevant areas. There's not huge swathes of black armour all in one area, so it doesn't matter if you cover it. But just don't let it pool too much so that you get some really ugly shadow areas on it. So just work your way around, spread the null oil around and get it over all the silver, all the gold, and also that Lupercal green shoulder pad. We'll highlight all the gold next, but before we do this, it's really important to go back and just tidy up any mistakes you've made using some of and Black. The highlight colour we're going to start with on the gold is Sycorax Bronze, and this is a really nice colour that complements the Balthazar Gold very well. And what we're looking to do is paint this over all those areas that are going to catch light, and there's going to be some parts where you can use the tip of your brush, such as along the front breastplate of the armour. There's going to be other parts where you need to use the side of your brush along a sharp edge to get a really nice fine highlight. The final highlight on that gold trim is Canoptec Alloy, and we're going to use this fairly sparingly, using just the side of the brush to get a nice sharp highlight. And again, we're looking for those areas where the light is going to hit the most, so the centre of the breastplate, any sharp edges or corners of the armour. And that's really going to help accentuate and make that gold trim pop, because what we don't want it to do is be too dark. With that gold looking nice and spiffy, we're going to highlight all of the silver next, and the only non-Games Workshop paint I'm going to use, please don't hate me Games Workshop, is Vallejo Model Air Chrome, and we're going to use this to highlight all the silver. And what we're looking to do, very similar to how we've highlighted the gold, is just catch those really sharp raised edges to give a nice fine highlight that really makes that silver pop. And what I'd advise you to do is just use it sparingly, because it's always easy to go back in and add a little bit more if you need to. Now we'll move on to the leather, and the colour we're going to base all of it is dried bark. And in terms of what we're painting, we've got the loincloth and we've got the leather epaulets coming down from the shoulder pads. So take your time not to paint over anything you've already finished, but this is a really straightforward uh, step, and you should be able to get this covered in one coat. The first highlight on the leather is going to be with Gawthor Brown, and in terms of how I'm applying this, I'm doing it in quite a jagged, mishmash fashion. I'm stippling it, I'm doing some edge highlights, and I'm making sure this paint's fairly thin and I haven't got too much on my brush, and this will blend into that dry bark nicely, and it'll start to build up a nice texture to give that leather effect. The final highlight on the leather is going to be with Carrick Stone. Now, this is a much brighter colour, but I'm going to make sure it's nice and thin, and again, I'm going to use that stippling motion and that kind of catching the edges to, again, add texture to it. Now, I'm really happy with how this has turned out, and I think that leather is quite effective. If you want to tone it down, then you can put a coat of Agrax Earthshade on it, but for me, I'm really happy with this. 
Next up, take some Mephiston Red and use this to base all of the Eyes of Horus that we've got across the model. So there are several, make sure you do get them all. And whilst we've got the Mephiston Red out, we're also going to base coat the cloak. So take your time around those areas you've already finished, like the wolf and the armour plates, or the, the trim especially. And make sure you don't put this on too thick, so you may need two or three coats to cover the cloak properly, but make sure you've got a nice, solid base coat. Going back to those eyes, let's give them that fiery look. So I've taken some Troll Slayer Orange and mixed this 50-50 with some Mephiston Red. And I'm just looking to highlight the top half of the eyes. So you can try and keep it tight with a line if you want, but we'll build some of that definition in through the next couple of highlighting stages. The next highlight on the eyes is going to be with pure Troll Slayer Orange. And what we're looking to do here is draw a thin line down the side of the eye as well as around the outside of the orb. Finally, take some Irial Yellow and paint this in exactly the same way as the Troll Slayer Orange, except use a much finer line and be much more careful, and we're looking to paint this inside the Troll Slayer Orange. Now, once that's dry, I'm going to take some Gloss Varnish and just pop a little bit over these Eyes of Horus, and that'll give them a really nice gem-like glow. I've taken some of Bad and Black and painted the eyes themselves, and with the Gloss Varnish, these look really effective. So next up, we need to block in some of the other colours, and the colour we're going to use for this is Korax White. In terms of what we're looking to do, we're going to paint the skulls on the back of the cloak, we're going to paint the wolf teeth in the eye, as well as those lenses that Horus has got on his armour. To get these areas finished, we'll move to contrast paint. So what we'll do is use some skeleton hood on the skulls. Make sure it doesn't pool too much. Move it around if you need to. We'll also use some Blood Angels Red on the big lens and some Warp Lightning on the smaller lens. We'll move on to the armour next, and the first part we'll do is that green shoulder pad. So the highlight colour we're going to use is Sons of Horus Green, and what we're looking to do is just paint this into the middle of the shoulder pad. Take your time making sure you don't get it on any of the metal that you've already finished, and leave those darker colours in the recesses. To finish up this pad, take some side bright green, and what we're looking to do is just put a really nice fine highlight inside that Sons of Horus Green, and this will just add a little bit of pop to this area, which will give you a nice focal point away from all the black armour and the dark gold. Next up, we'll start that red glow, and the colour we're going to use this is Flesh Terrors Red, and all I'm doing here is painting this inside the hood of the armour, and you can see that it gives you a really nice effect. I'll show you how to paint Horus's face later, and that'll obviously bring the red glow onto that face, and we'll enhance the glow as well a little bit. But for now, just pop that in there. Okay, let's move on to the most prominent part of Horus, and that's his black armour. So the first thing we need to do is take a 50-50 mix of Incubi Darkness and a Bad and Black. We're going to paint this over the majority of the armour, leaving that d pure black colour in the deepest recesses, as well as the lower part of the plate. And if you're not sure what I mean, just have a look at the video, look at where I'm placing this first kind of highlight and that'll hopefully give you an idea about how to do this. Next up take some pure Incubi Darkness and we're going to start to really target areas on the model now so we're looking at catching those raised edges, those sharp edges and panels of armour. We're also looking to think about the volumes that we've got in some of these shapes, so some cylindrical shapes where we might want to do a, an area highlight as opposed to a sharp edge highlight. Again, work your way around the model, just take your time and enjoy this because what you'll start to see is the model really come into life. Next up, take some Thunderhawk Blue, and what we're looking to do here is again just paint this inside the Incubi Darkness highlight we've just put on there. So we're looking to catch the sharp edges using the side of the brush. We're also looking to follow some of the filigree pattern that we've got on the chest of the armour and around those shoulder pads. Now use this fairly sparingly, and make sure you haven't got too much on your brush when you do it. Finally, what we're looking to do is just add a little bit of flash to the armour on those sharpest edges. So the colour we're going to use is Fenrisian Grey, which is a very bright colour. So make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, make sure it's slightly thinned down. And what we're looking to do is just catch those most prominent raised edges to show the depth of colours we've got going on through this black armour. We'll move on to Horus's billowing cloak next, and this is another prominent part of the model that we want to get a nice, effective finish on. So we're going to focus on the shadows first, and the colour I'm going to use to get going is Screamer Pink. And what I'm looking to do is to paint this into all those recesses and all those big, deep folds that we've got that are really nicely sculpted here. For the deepest, darkest parts, we're going to take some Galvor back red. Now, I've made sure I've thinned this down, and it doesn't really cover very well anyway. So what you'll find is when you put that first coat down, it should blend into the scream of pink a little bit. And then we can just put another coat on top of it in the deepest, darkest part of the cloak to really get a nice bit of depth. 
I'll move back to Mephisto and Red now, and what I'm looking to do is smooth over the edges of those transitions a little bit. So I've thinned this down a little bit. I'm just going to paint it over where we've got the dark and the light coming together. If you're feeling really confident, you can try a little bit of wet blend in here, so you can pop some Mephisto and Red down, and then take some Screamer Pink and paint them into each other so they blend together. Once that starts to work, put some more Mephisto and Red in there, and that should hopefully smooth that transition from the shadow to the lighter Mephisto and Red colour. One really important thing to say here is to be really mindful about which parts of the cloak are going to be catching light and which parts are going to be in darkness. So it's really important that you take the time to check that. We'll carry on building up highlights next along those major fold areas that are going to be catching the light. So the colour is Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, it's thinned down a little bit so that it does blend into that Memphis and Red underneath. And I'm going to focus on those areas that are going to catch the most light. Now, again, if you feel the need to, you can try wet blending with Mephisto and Red. Otherwise, you can just carry on with just the Evil Sun Scarlet, getting some nice crisp highlights. Finally, we'll take some Wild Rider Red, and we'll just use this on the most prominent upper parts of the fold. So use it fairly sparingly, and make sure you've got a nice tip on your brush, and you've got a nice sharp highlight. The last thing we need to do on the body before we move on to Horace's face is that little bit of detail that we've got on the bottom of the cloak. So what we'll do is base this in XV88 because we're going to do a little bit of gold NMM. It's not going to be particularly well blended, it's just going to sell the effect that it looks gold. Next up, shade this with some Nuln Oil and this is going to do two things. Firstly, it's going to darken down the XV88 and it's also going to give you a little bit of a black line which will differentiate the red and the gold. Once that first coat is dry, go into the darker recesses in which are in the deeper folds and add another coat of nail oil just to make it darker. Once that's completely dry, we'll go back in with some XV88. Now we're just going to target those parts that are going to be catching some light. So those deep folds and deep recesses, we put the second coat of nail oil. We're going to ignore those and just focus on the raised parts. Refining that highlight even more, we're going to use some Ashabti Bone. And again, we're looking to focus on the most prominent parts that are on this little bit of design. So we're looking at the top of folds. Now make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, you've got a good point and you've thinned it down a little because that'll help it blend together. The final highlight is just going to be a little dot of white scar along those areas that are most prominent and they're going to catch the most light. And that gives you a really easy false non-metallic metal gold effect on this little bit of design on the cloak. Moving across to Horace's face, the first thing we want to do is get a nice even base coat down. So we're going to take some Cadian Flesh Tone, we're going to thin it down a little bit and we're going to paint this onto the face. We're probably going to need about three coats and make sure that you let each coat dry before you go back otherwise you can cause some damage. When that's dry we'll take some Reichland Flesh Shade and we're going to work this into the recesses of the face. We're not going to worry about covering the whole head, we're just going to focus on the brow, the eyes, the nose, the mouth and the underside of the cheeks as well as where uh, the flesh meets the collar because we just want to build a nice subtle shade here. Once the Reichland Flesh Shade is dry we'll go back to Cadian Flesh Tone and again we're keeping it fairly thin, we've got a good point on our brush and we're going to focus on those prominent areas such as the cheekbones, the nose, uh, the brow and we're going to look at the frown lines in the middle as well and just kind of draw these in and taking our time with this and make sure that we're not flooding the area but we're building up a subtle change of shade. Next, do the same with Kislev Flesh. Again, thin it down, not much on your brush and a good tip, and focus on the nose, the brow, the cheekbones, around those eyes, the eyelids, to really build up some of this definition. Now, this is much bigger than a normal head, so you've got a little bit more area to play around. So Horus is actually looking off to his right, which means the left portion of his face is going to catch the most of the light. So we'll do an extreme highlight here using Flayed One Flesh. And again, fairly thin, not much on your brush. And we're just going to focus on that left-hand side of his face around the brow, the cheekbones, and also the eyelid a little bit as well. And that will give us a nice contrast to the darker right-hand side of the face. For the eyes, I'm going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh. And it's really important I've got hardly any on my brush and that the paint is fairly thin so that it does flow. I'm just looking to dot those eyes, leaving a little bit of that darker Reichland flesh in around the edge. Finally, I've taken some really thin down Incubi Darkness, and I'm just going to use this to dot the pupils on the eyes. Remember, Horace is looking off to the right, so use that to judge where you put the pupils. Next up, we need to do the red glow on Horace's face. So the way we'll do this is going to be completely wild. Now, I learned this from watching Richard Gray, Demon Rich, on any social media. Go check him out. He's amazing. Take some Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint and paint this over the face. 
Before that dries, clean your brush off and put it in some contrast medium and flood the area of the face with this contrast medium and start to thin out the Blood Angel's Red. What we're looking to do is paint this down towards the bottom of the face and you should start to see that this transitions nicely from the flesh colour to a lighter red colour as it gets a little more prominent towards the bottom. If you need to add more contrast medium then feel free to do so. That's Horus complete so let's get going on the base. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to base it using some Doom Bull Brown. But before we do I'm going to move really quickly here. And I know it might sound silly but we're looking for wet paint. So take that Doom Bull Brown, thin it down and then slop it all over that base. While that paint is wet we're going to now take some Zandri Dust and paint this over the Doom Bull Brown. And what this will give you an effect of, it'll start to blend together and mix on the model and you start to get a pinky browny colour. Once you've put the first coat of Zandri Dust down, clean your brush off and then we're going to go back with more Zandri Dust and we're going to paint this over because that first layer will have dried a little bit. This will start to look a bit more prominent in terms of moving towards that Zandri Dust colour. The reason we're doing all this is because you want to build up lots of different colours and textures. So next up we're going to dry brush some Shabti Bone. Now I'm doing a circular motion here and I'm looking to catch the edge of all the little bits of rubble. And don't forget we're doing this on the eagle head as well and the little compartment bit that we've got that hides where the two bases join on the back of the model. We'll finish this dry brushing stage using some Wraith Bone and again we're looking to do exactly the same thing, catching those prominent edges. Work all the way around the model, don't be afraid if you splodge on too much, but take your time and just use it fairly sparingly. We're going to shade all of the bases exactly the same way we did that red glow on the face, except we're going to start off using Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint. So make sure you've got a fairly big brush, spread this out nice and wide and nice and thickly over the base. Then take some contrast medium with a clean brush and just put it all over that Gulliman flesh. Clean your brush off again, you can start to move the Gulliman flesh around. Make sure it gets into those recesses and it might be handy to have a paper towel just to dab any bits that start flowing off the base. Make sure that you take your time with this but work fairly quickly with that contrast medium so it doesn't dry and become blotchy and then keep an eye on it to make sure you don't get any major pooling. Make sure that Gulliman Flesh has had plenty of time to dry and when it's completely dry we're going to go back in with some Wraith Bone and a dry brush. I'm going to focus on those prominent edges again. If you find that you put too much on in one area don't worry just start to stipple it around and blend it in so it doesn't look too stark. To give all of the rubble around this base a little bit of a different colour I'm just going to take some Psycho Brown Contrast Paint and paint it over it. I'm not going to thin it down, I'm just going to make sure that it covers everything. Now there are a few bits of shoulder pads, a few bits of metal. I'm just going to use Sons of Horus on the shoulder pads and I'm going to paint the metal exactly the same way I painted the uh, silver using lead belch and some null oil. I'm not going to bother highlighting it. The last thing we need to do is pop some marble veins over the base and this is going to be really easy. Take some Basilicane and Grey Contrast Paint, pop it on a wet palette and then use a brush with a really good point. And what we're looking to do is just trace some random veins across the model and this will really help things pop out. If it's too thin then you can go over it again but it's really key that you just take your time and make sure you've got a really good point on your brush. And there we have it, Horus Lupercal is ready for either your display cabinet or the table. Either way he's already started the destruction of the Imperium of Man. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, check out my other content where I paint Rogel Dawn here. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.